Krishna, as well as the Pacific Island from Circuit Channel by rising, please. A very good morning to you all. I am Maria Dainoke, the UN uh, Capital Development Fund's County Coordinator for Tonga. It is a pleasure and a privilege to lead this event as your MC. Before we start with formalities, I would like to bring to your attention a few general housekeeping rules. The location for the washrooms, just follow the signs, the exit signs, and it's uh, located at the back. 
close to the bar. Emergency exit points, again, follow the exit signs. It's right on top. Location and serving of refreshments will be available, um, again, at the back. And we also have COVID self-test available should anyone requires it. Just please liaise with our colleagues at the UNCDF if you wish to administer a test. And we also need to follow the COVID-19 protocol by wearing our mask at all times. Now that we have this out of the way, let us begin. To the Singapore Minister of Foreign Affairs, Honorable Mr. Vivian Balkrishnan, the Secretary General of Pacific For Island Forum, Mr. Harry Bona, Australian High Commissioner to Singapore, His Excellency Mr. Will Hotman, the New Zealand High Commissioner to Singapore, Her Excellency Cho Tingo. The Singapore Ambassador, Mary C. Chang, who is the Ambassador to the Pacific Island Forum. The Executive Secretary of UNCDF, Ms. Preeti Sinha. To the Governors of the Central Banks of Fiji and Solomon Islands, Mr. Arif Ali and Dr. Luke Forao. To the Chief Fintech Officer for the Monetary Authority of Singapore, Mr. Sobnandu Mohanty. Senior government officials and private sector partners, invited guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. Nisa Pulavinaka, Maloe Lele, Tamofatio, and welcome to the Pacific Islands FinTech Innovation Challenge. 2022. This FinTech Challenge is an initiative of UNCDF's Pacific Digital Economy Program in collaboration with the Market Development Facility and the Asian Development Bank. The program is supported by the Government of Australia, so please join me in welcoming the Australian High Commissioner to Singapore. Mr. Will Hodgson, please welcome the guests and introductory remarks. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, and it's an absolute delight to be here, and it's a, a special honour uh, to be with you all, but in particular to Minister Dr. Balakrishnan. Um, it's a great reflection of your support for my nation of Australia, but also the Pacific region more broadly. So our sincere thanks to you for giving us your time. Can I also acknowledge the Secretary General of the Pacific Islands Forum, Mr Puna, um, to uh, my colleagues um, and to uh, Her Excellency, the High Commissioner uh, for New to Singapore for New Zealand, uh, Joe Tindall, um, can I also recognise Singapore's High Commissioner to the Pacific Islands Forum, uh, Ms. C. Cheng, um, to the Executive Secretary of the UN Capital Development Fund, Ms. Sina, uh, and to the Governors of the Reserve Bank of Fiji, Mr. Ali and the Solomon Islands counterpart, Dr. Farrell, um, and also to uh, those corporate supporters um, and Participate, participating fintechs and UN representatives, all distinguished guests. And it's, it's an absolute delight to be with you all in person at the launch of the Pacific Islands Fintech Innovation Challenge 2022. Um, and this is an event that the Australian Government is very proud to support, and it's especially timely. As the world emerges from a global pandemic and adapts to new ways of doing business, increasingly more readily adopting digital technologies. And as we look to better collaboration with Pacific Island nations to support their growth and development and that of our region. We have shared interests in creating a safe and secure and prosperous region. 
And the ICT and digital sectors will be a vital enabler in this regard. They uh, will provide immense value in addressing the challenge, the tyranny of distance, which is referenced in the Pacific Island Forum's e-commerce strategy. And it's why the Australian government is bringing renewed energy, focus and commitment to the Pacific Island, our family. Significantly increased development assistance targeted to meet Pacific priorities and to support its institutions, expanding opportunities for Pacific Islanders to work in Australia, and importantly, new action to support Pacific Island countries in addressing climate change. <coughs> Infrastructure, along with increased skills and technical capabilities, is also essential, and that's why Australia has invested in a next generation coral sea cable system to deliver high speed quality internet connectivity to Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands. And more infrastructure projects are planned or already under, underway through a $2 billion Australian financing facility for the Pacific. But a key element of this renewed commitment includes working more closely with Pacific Island governments and their people to advance economic development and prosperity. And this Pacific Islands FinTech Innovation Challenge is a meaningful way to do just that. To help develop solutions for those who are less digitally connected, those who are financially excluded, so that they can participate and prosper. So our hope is that this boot camp not only identifies any shortcomings, but also those solutions, innovative solutions to these challenges that are responsive to the challenges of the region, but also cognizant of the cultural and societal needs of the Pacific. And to the participants, I hope that you also find this an opportunity to build personal relationships with other innovators, regulators and government officials here today. My sincere thanks to those who have organised the challenge, the enormous amount of work that has gone into an event of this type and that has brought us all together. Again to His Excellency Mr Puna and to Minister Balakrishnan and indeed the Singapore Government for strongly supporting this event. To all our partners, the UN Capital Development Fund, the Market Development Facility, the Asian Development Bank, the New Zealand Foreign Affairs and Trade, and to the many corporate sponsors. Together we hope to inspire the enterprise of the 11 teams in this challenge, to strengthen collaboration and knowledge sharing, and I suspect some healthy competition. Uh, we thank you for your participation. I look forward to welcoming many of you uh, to my home this evening to reflect on what you've done today. Our very best wishes to the Pacific Islands FinTech Challenge of 2022. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner, for your welcome address and for the support for this event. It is greatly appreciated. Um, the support and commitment from our uh, Government of Australia in building the infrastructure, especially the digital world for the Pacific, is uh, commendable. So, in Invited guests, I now welcome the Honourable Minister of Foreign Affairs to Singapore, Mr. Vivian Balkrishnan, for the keynote address. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And let me first say on behalf of Singapore, we're delighted, we are honoured to be the venue for the Pacific Islands FinTech Challenge. Of course, we thank Australia for your support uh, for this event. And to all our guests from overseas, a very warm welcome to Singapore. Your Excellency Henry Puna, the Secretary General of the Pacific Islands Forum, uh, you may, some of you, I hope most of you realize that he used to be the Prime Minister of the Cook Islands. And what, apart from all his achievements locally, one key intellectual contribution was to coin the term large ocean states. Now, 
This is important and relevant today. Many people think of the Pacific Islands as far-flung, tiny islands scattered across the oceans. And for a long while, we used to call ourselves small island developing states. Henry Purnas upended that concept and reminded all of us that actually if you include the exclusive economic zone around the islands, you are in fact large ocean states. Uh, unfortunately for Singapore, we remain a small island state. <laughs> the second point, which is related to this concept of large ocean states, is that with the installation of submarine cables and the application of digital technologies, those far-flung distances collapse. And therefore, the third point which you need to think about today is how are you going to convert large ocean states with telescoped distances due to digital technologies into opportunity for all your citizens and to access the rest of the world. So this is the larger context for the application of fintech in the Pacific Island region and indeed even to us in, in Singapore and to Australia and New Zealand. The digital revolution was well underway before the pandemic hit us. But the events of the last two and a half years have reminded us that the pace of change due to digital technologies has increased. And in fact, the impact of unequal digital access has been accentuated. Just think about the lockdowns, the fact that people had to go online to engage, to connect, to transact. And you realize that COVID-19, in fact, underlined, emphasized this point. The digital revolution has created new jobs, new economic opportunities. Digital marketplaces have enabled small businesses to reach more customers everywhere. The technology has facilitated trade and cross-border transactions, and it has helped to, in a sense, offset headwinds against globalization. And digital technologies have of course also been essential for education and skills training, and especially during this time of COVID-19. The robust FinTech solutions offer pathways to a more open, inclusive, and sustainable economy. And this is particularly relevant for the Pacific Islands. FinTech enables access to financial services and it bridges gaps for unbanked people. Now, in Southeast Asia, just ASEAN alone, we have a combined population of about 660 million. However, about 40% or 250 million people in ASEAN remain unbanked. Similarly, in the Pacific Island region, I believe it's, the figure is also around 40% of the population do not have access to formal financial services. We believe digital technology can broaden the reach of financial services and lay the foundation for a more inclusive economy. Payments, in particular cross-border payments, are essential for cross-border trade. Making this cheaper, faster, more secure, accessible, and fairer will significantly boost trade, e-commerce, tourism, spending, and remittances across the globe. Just to give you one example, think about a black pearl farmer on an island having access to a market of hundreds of millions and being able to receive payments within minutes. Think of the impact on jobs and opportunities that creates for islanders everywhere. Our central bank, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, and the Bank of Thailand have collaborated to look at innovative ways to address this challenge. And in 2021, we launched the world's first retail, faster digital payment systems links, linkage. This allows individuals in Singapore and Thailand to send money to one another 
All we need is not a bank account number, what we need is a mobile number. The money is transferred directly from the sender's bank account to the recipient's bank account. It literally just takes a few minutes to complete the transaction. It is five times cheaper. I believe it's around 3% of the transfer value compared to the previous 10 to 15% via correspondent banking channels. And as anyone who has had to remit money across borders will know, this is a big deal for people. Now, Southeast Asia is the world's fastest growing region for digital wallets. In 2021, some 77% of Malaysians, 70% of Indonesians, 66% of Thailand's population used a digital wallet at least once a month. That figure is even higher in Singapore. Moving forward, new technologies such as central bank digital currencies are currently being explored and experimented on by many central banks across the globe. The Bank for International Settlement Innovation Hub is doing extensive technical pilots to explore the potential for wholesale central bank digital currencies to further reduce the cost and to enhance the efficiency of wholesale cross-border transactions. Climate change is another existential challenge for small island states like Singapore and of course the large ocean states of the Pacific Islands. We all need to invest in mitigating physical risks whilst transi transitioning our economies to a low carbon future. We need to crowd in to incentivize the entry of private sector capital to finance this massive undertaking through green finance. One precondition here, investors will demand accountability that the capital is truly achieving the purported environmental benefits. It is thus in our interest, our collective interest to promote green fintech, to harness technology and data to enable transparent, trusted and efficient green finance to take off. Singapore has launched Project Green Print, a collection of initiatives to harness this technology for a data-centric ecosystem that supports the financial sector's green and sustainability agenda. The Monetary Authority of Singapore will partner the industry to develop interoperable data platforms to drive efficient, trusted collection and the flow of data for green finance across different stakeholders. And this is an area which I would commend to the Pacific Island Forum to study and to ride on these platforms that we're developing. We cannot disregard the headwinds that are being faced by the fintech sector. It has become more challenging to access capital with rising interest rates, falling valuations, and investors quite rightly emphasize a path to profitability. We've all seen the recent cryptocurrency crashes affecting a large number of digital asset players. And this quite rightly has led to skepticism of emerging technologies. Geopolitical and macroeconomic challenges, including higher food and energy prices, and inflationary price pressures have added, have added to this uncertainty. But the potential for fintech remains strong. Growth is still on an upward trajectory and a record of over 210 billion US dollars in fintech investments were made last year, another 108 billion US dollars in the first half of 2022. In Singapore, we have more than 1,400 fintech companies a marked increase from the 50 fintech companies that we had in 2015. In 2021, we achieved an all-time high of US $3.9 billion of fintech investments. More than 40 financial institutions have set up their innovation labs in Singapore to experiment with these emerging digital technologies and to develop appropriate new products and services that work in Asia, and if I may now add, in the Pacific Island region. So Singapore looks forward to working with our partners to grow this regional fintech sector and to harness fintech solutions to expand opportunities for your people. The Pacific Islands have always been known for their robust entrepreneurial people. 
tough people who have to work with the challenges of nature but also overcome some of the challenges of history and to overcome geography. We believe FinTech Solutions will help to uplift the prospects for micro-business owners across the Pacific region. I know that M-Pesa, QRP, is a popular uh, payment app in Fiji that's used by businesses of all sizes. For many Fijians, it is the first formal financial service that they have used. And such apps have allowed Fijians to set up their own micro-businesses with little to no transaction costs. Cent the central banks of six Pacific islands, Fiji, Papua New Guinea, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Tonga and Vanuatu, as well as Timor-Leste and Seychelles, have, link have launched the Pacific region regulatory sandbox. This allows financial service providers and financial technology firms from across the world to test their products in a live environment, enabling greater access to markets in these eight countries. And these remittances also make critical contributions to the national incomes in the Pacific Islands and are a key source of foreign exchange. But digital transactions are not yet completely seamless and the full benefits have not yet been fully realized. We need to build on the foundational digital infrastructures, which comprise both the physical infrastructure as well as the policy and rules that govern digital identity, consent, payments, and data exchange. And th these will allow different users, solutions, and devices to connect, to interconnect, and to interact and engage. They will support innovative digital solutions for inclusive participation, establish trust, and facilitate scaled economic transactions that go across our borders. These enable digital services, including remittances, to scale up, to reach more people and businesses at a lower cost and greater convenience. Singapore has worked with Brunei, Cambodia, Ghana, and Kenya in 2021 on a report which sets out the core components of this foundational digital infrastructures. And this includes advocating for open source codes and for collaboration to benefit developing countries. The pitch I'm making to the Pacific Island region is that there are no trade secrets. These are open platforms, open source. Take a look, examine, kick the tires, build your own systems and make sure they interoperate with those that we are developing, serving Southeast Asia. And beyond. So I'm very glad that the Pacific Island Forum and the UN Capital Development Fund chose Singapore as the venue for the Pacific Islands FinTech Innovation Challenge Bootcamp. Apart from Singapore's role as a FinTech hub, we also enjoy long-standing relations with the Pacific Islands. And I'm, I haven't tracked the mileage of Mary C. Ching as she has you know, assiduously <laughs> traveled and engaged across the island region over the years. We have, in Singapore, we are very glad that we have been able to welcome more than 5,400 officials from the Pacific Islands to participate in the Singapore Cooperation Program. This includes causes, including digital transformation. Singapore is also deeply honored to have been admitted as a dialogue partner of the PIF in 2021. And we look forward, and I give you the assurance that we will be an active and constructive partner to the PIF, and all the more so because we are a small island state, and we are brothers and sisters across the Pacific. So I am optimistic that the Pacific Islands FinTech Innovation Challenge will foster stronger collaboration between ASEAN and the Pacific Islands. I understand that there are 11 companies who will be presenting their solutions to address five areas, including improving access to financial products and services, as well as digitizing customer services. So I look forward to the knowledge sharing. I wish the bootcamp every success, a very intensive sessions before you retire for drinks at the High Commissioner's house tonight. Thank you all very much.
thank you once again, Honorable Minister, for your inspiring uh, remarks. And uh, I must say you touch base on key issues that we face in, in the Pacific, which is the remittances and also the digital payments, uh, the usage of mobile money. So uh, I think it's befitting that we picked uh, Singapore um, to host this event, given the digital revolution that we witnessed today. So again, uh, thank you. We are, now to, we are delighted to be hosting this event in a renowned international financial center and Fox Growing Fintech Hub, which is Singapore. And for that, once again, Minister, we appreciate the support. Next, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to welcome the Secretary General of the Pacific Islands Forum, Mr. Henry Puna, for his remarks. Excellencies, friends, can I start by associating myself with the very warm and comprehensive acknowledgement and welcome by our MC and by His Excellency, the Australian High Commissioner, and say with the greatest of respects, all protocol is observed. I'm very pleased to be here this morning to be with you all for this Pacific Islands FinTech Innovation Challenge. Minister, you were very generous with your comments about my invention of the term large ocean states. The truth is I've been a senior public servant of the Cook Islands before becoming Prime Minister for over 10 years. And I had this complex when engaging globally that we are so small and we really don't matter. And yet, when I look at our total area under international law, hey, we are not that small. The Cocoa Islands has a territory of, over two, of about 2 million square kilometers. But of that, less than 1% is land area. And so I decided to coin the phrase large ocean states. And because in reality, that is what we are. And now I see our leaders have taken that a bit a step further by identifying the Pacific as the Blue Pacific Continent. 96% of, of our Pacific territory is water. And so it makes sense that we identify ourselves as the Blue Pacific Continent. For me, this opportunity is an excellent one for you, FinTech, to broaden your mindset and to explore innovative mechanisms and solutions to leverage the opportunity of technology and digital economies to advance our economic aspirations. If I may, please allow me to offer some brief reflections on our current context in the Pacific Islands region today. We live today in an increasingly globalized world and in a century where the center of global economic power is expected to shift. In this context, the Pacific region is emerging as a strong collective of large ocean states in an increasingly contested strategic environment. In parallel, the evolution of technology continues at an unprecedented pace and with it emerges opportunities to be leveraged and risks to be navigated. In such a fluid regional and global environment, it is critical that we are able to remain abreast of new developments and further that we can capitalize on opportunities that do arise in our best interests. It is in this spirit that I welcome the intent and focus of this innovation challenge. Further, I must commend the collaboration between the UN Capital Development Fund, the Marketing Development Facility, the Asian Development Bank, and most especially the governments of Australia and New Zealand for enabling this innovative forum. It would be remiss of me if I did not also acknowledge the warm hospitality of our good host, Minister Balakrishnan, and the Government of Singapore. Thank you kindly. 
Ladies and gentlemen, as I am sure you will all agree, the success of any initiative is a solid and well-founded plan and strategy. At a regional level, our forum leaders met in Suva, Fiji, just a fortnight ago to consider and endorse the 2050 strategy for the Blue Pacific continent. It is our blueprint for collective action and regionalism moving forward. A key tenet of this strategy is the recognition and appreciation for technology and innovation and how we as a region can use this to strengthen connectivity across our Blue Pacific region. Indeed, it is no secret that technology and digital economy has all but wiped the tyranny of distance to markets. And we have seen this in real terms across the Pacific region, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. On that note, allow me please to reflect a bit on the issue of e-commerce and how we in the region have integrated this at a collective level. Digital solutions like electronic payments have strong potential to boost financial inclusion in the Pacific and in doing so, facilitate overall economic growth. However, to bring this to fruition, we must ensure Pacific countries have proper policies and frameworks in place to enable us to support our success in this sector. As we have seen informally during the pandemic, through online shipping via social media platforms, digital solutions will be integral to our future prospects. Recognizing this, our trade ministers met in August 2021 and endorsed the Pacific Regional E-Commerce Strategy and Roadmap that outlines clear goals and priorities to increase the Pacific's digital trade readiness. Digital payments have long been a pressing issue in our region, but consistent with global trends, they thrived during the pandemic. Countries like Fiji, Tonga and Samoa recorded an increase in inward remittances through channels such as mobile money or internet banking as our communities abroad sent home support for family and friends. This illustrates the potential digital payments have in our region. But Pacific governments still face numerous challenges, including infrastructure that needs to be addressed collectively with all our partners. Indeed, while the strategy provides specific guidance for e-commerce developments, I am of the view that its principles are universally applicable to all digital solutions. In that regard, I must note that we are now in a country that has demonstrated great success in integrating digital solutions across the board. And we as a region have much to learn from the example and opportunities offered by Singapore. Indeed, this idea underlines a key aspect of success for us as a region. That is, the value of development partnerships that are guided by and support our regional priorities and aspirations. In saying so, allow me to recognize the strengthened partnership that we have developed with the UNCDF in recent months. It is encouraging to see the range of fintechs present in the room today, all with the common goal of finding solutions to better Pacific lives. Fintechs have a vital role to play in bringing the financially excluded into the formal financial ecosystem. There is something the region has historically struggled with, but is working actively to address through regional frameworks like our Pacific Regional E-Commerce Strategy. Innovation challenges such as this provide a valuable platform to nurture and build innovative solutions by bringing together the creators, the entrepreneurs, and the thinkers to develop unique solutions to pressing issues. And indeed, 
We have an exciting array of regional and global fintechs and several here today, ready to brainstorm and action innovative ideas. The FinTech Challenge is designed to spur the kind of innovative thinking required to meet the demands of customers and businesses. And I welcome the work and effort that has gone into bringing this competition to fruition. With those brief remarks, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you all the very best for the next three days. And I look forward to the innovative solutions that you will create and start sharing tonight as His Excellency the High Commissioner's <laughs> residence. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, um, SG Puna, for those encouraging words and uh, for emphasizing the need that we need to um, approach in a collective manner uh, from the Pacific in order to build our digital infrastructures and to find digital solutions for all our problems. And we look forward to working closely with the forum on shared objectives, so um, Taki. Invited guests, may I now invite the Chief FinTech Officer for the Monetary Authority of Singapore, Mr. Sognendu Marty, for his remarks. Good morning, uh, Excellency, distinguished guests. Uh, you know, Minister has made my life difficult because I was looking at my speech and whatever you have said is already covered. So I decided to get rid of the speech and let me give you uh, my two examples of how FinTech can make a big impact on inclusion. Uh, you know, FinTechs, uh, if you talk to FinTech founders, uh, they all start with this idea that they can do better than banks and they want to bring and serve consumers who are traditionally excluded from financial services at an affordable cost at a superior user experience. So fintechs by design are very inclusive in their thinking. But there are three choke points to which restricts fintech to make a big impact on the financial inclusion. If you look at the numbers globally, while there are remarkable examples of how fintechs have made impact on the inclusion side, but the numbers are still small and is not able to scale into, into many countries. And the three choke points in my mind which stops a fintech to make that impact, first, our self-regulators, regulations. Second, market infrastructure, because for a fintech to succeed, you must have uh, a digital infrastructure where they can build applications. And third, the marketplace itself, because a marketplace has its own set of barriers which prevents consumer to participate in the financial sector, because financial sector needs to work with other sectors to make it impactful. So I will take an example that ministers shared on our pay now and uh, the Thailand connectivity. Uh, it is a perfect ex example where regulators and the infrastructure and the policymaker came together uh, to build that infrastructure so that we can, migrant workers from Singapore uh, can send back money home at a $3 per $100 cost at a, at a speed of a few seconds to send the money. But it took us three years to build it. Three years. Yeah. Despite Thailand has an exactly same architecture of a mobile phone based uh, payment and Singapore has a pay now which is also a mobile phone based payment infrastructure. The question is why it took us three years? Because we had to align our policies to make it work. We had to align small issues on the technology interoperability because different country builds different technology stack and then not necessarily talk to each other in a seamless way. So lack of interoperability between systems and lack of alignment between different regulators can lead to this long period of development. Now what we learned out of Thailand and Singapore connectivity, we pushed ourselves and we decided to let's try with other countries. And the country we chose is the most difficult country when it comes to connecting the payment network, which is India. And uh, just to imagine that if it took three years to connect to Thailand, how long it will connect 
will it take us to connect to India? India has capital control rules and more complex uh, challenges. But the reality is, we figured out a work with India, Reserve Bank of India, and we're going live in nine months. Nine months. And the, and, and the reason we could do it, India has built an India stack, which is based on the principle of open construct, open, interoperable architecture. Singapore also has built an open stack based on an open interoperable architecture called our PayNow, our, our faster payment system, our national ID system. So what it says that if countries have a, 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 an architecture which allows you to interoperate, the speed at which we can connect dramatically changes. But the elephant in the room are the regulators. So between RBI and MAS, we worked out certain policy alignment where we decided let's try to solve the problem and understand whom we are trying to help. We are trying to help migrant workers who are sending low value transfer from Singapore to India. And typically they are less than a thousand dollar. And if you think about monthly cumulative money they send, can you relax some of the capital control rules to make it work for low value transfer? So both the regulators work together and create a policy alignment to allow certain exception on the capital control side so that we can make these transfers easy. Uh, 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 not the complicated process. We also went one step further. Both the regulators allowed that the new architecture should run on a public cloud because you need scale. The Singapore India quarter is close to billion dollar. You need to have a scale to run that kind of volume. We both agreed to build an open architecture using APIs so that the, the fintechs can connect to this architecture and build application on top of it. We as a public sector don't want to build application. Our job is to provide a rail which allows innovation to happen on top of it, on top of the architecture. So this is an example of how regulators, good public infrastructure can come together and put an infrastructure which allows FinTech then to build application on top of it and make the real impact on financial inclusion. So this is an example on the payment side. The other example I'm going to take is more interesting. And uh, I'm going to a little story behind this. Uh, when I was a young management associate uh, with City, on the second day of my training, I was I went to get trained on credit, on, on credit operations. And the trainer was uh, was retiring that day, and I went and asked him anything he wanted to share with me uh, of his long journey with City. He said that there are two things I wanted to know as a credit officer you need to establish intent to pay and ability to pay for every loan you give. But intent to pay we cannot establish, so you have to rely on ability to pay, which is a collateral based lending. And by design, a collateral based lending excludes people. And that's the reason till today, you find a lot of people don't have access to credit because they don't have collateral to demonstrate ability to pay. He also said to me that when, we, when, def, when default happens, it is not ability to pay, it's intent to pay. So you have a problem on the lending side, you rely on ability to pay, but on the, on the default side, it is the intent to pay which causes most of the default. Can we fix this problem? And that was, I'm talking of 20 years back. We, so I took that thinking there and we started thinking about how can we build an infrastructure which establishes a way we can demonstrate, we can identify the ability to pay for small businesses. And we started a program with Central Bank of Ghana called Financial Trust Corridor. And the, and the genesis behind that, why Ghana? Because we wanted to create a, a program by which small and medium sized businesses can connect to each other through a digital marketplace and access finance from their respective bank. And hence it brings far more inclusive marketplace. We started this program called Financial Trust Corridor. Both the central banks met and decided to figure out a model to make it work. So I brought back this example from City that can we establish using the latest technology a way to identify intent to pay. And intent to pay, you know, is based on social behavior. If I have met minister and I want to tokenize that social relationship, I need some new technology by which I can prove I met minister and that established a, a credential for me that I'm socially at least identifiable. 
So we created within the two central bank a 60 data points, social data points, like taking a training, going to a workshop, coming to a workshop like this. And if, the, if we can tokenize this relationship in the form of a veritable credential and give it to that uh, person who can store in a wallet, can that be used to get credit from the bank? So we went through this process. Uh, we, we built this uh, wallet by which small and medium businesses can create credential. And we are just rolling out this whole process uh, starting this month. And we are targeting uh, uh, sesame seed growers and uh, soybean growers who can access this platform. They can build these tokens and, and they can create a wallet for themselves to access credit. The central bank of uh, the, the, the consolidated bank of Ghana is going to give credit based on this token and the development bank of Ghana is going to be a first class guarantee against this token. And there's a marketplace called Proxterra called Business Transport as a program out of Singapore provide the digital marketplace where both the buyers and sellers can establish digital credentials that there is a real market and real buyer for their products. You took all the data points, we created this token and we are rolling it out as we speak. This is an example where central bank participated, market infrastructure came together and the marketplace itself where the big buyers from Singapore or uh, wherever they are, they joined this digital uh, infrastructure, created that ecosystem and that, uh, that is now going to open up a new set of credit for small and medium businesses in Ghana. The reason I gave you this to example that fintechs can only succeed if these three choke points can be brought together. And, uh, and, the, and, 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 and to do that, we must have a, a mechanism by which uh, we can collaborate on the three areas. And Singapore today is ready to collaborate with all of you. We have uh, infrastructure, we have models by which we can solve three things. A policy alignment, market infrastructure, and also work on a marketplace alignment through digital platform. Uh, so, so I would like to pitch to all of you that let's look forward to this challenge, 11, pan, pan, uh, 11 families who have come together, look at this boot camp and what I expect from the boot camp, at least you should come and tell us, at least the regulators, here are the three things you need to have, we need to put together to make it work. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this event and I hope uh, we can come together and collaborate in this space. Wish all the participants best of luck and thank you very much to have letting me to share my journey in this in this whole uh, fintech space because without the support from the public infrastructure regulators things will be very difficult to execute thank you very much And you just showcase how you walked in with your um, speech and disrupt the typed up speeches from our other guest speakers. So thank you. <laughs> we realize that your intent to speak and your um, ability to speak. So we <laughs> really provided great insight for that. So uh, we're not going to have it. Ladies and gentlemen, I now uh, invite the Executive Secretary of uh, UNCDF, Ms. Preeti Singha, for the concluding remarks. Good morning, greetings to you all. I am so delighted to be here. Just to note that I have flown all the way from New York this morning to be here with you to show our importance and significance to Singapore, to the Pacific Islands, to Australia, New Zealand, to this whole region. And I will be here for about a month touring various parts of Asia. I also have a prepared speech, but maybe I'll take a couple of uh, moments to uh, go extempore as a previous speaker. So I also come from the banking sector, I've been in the banking sector for 30 years. So, so I'm so excited by this FinTech challenge. And I'm a big believer in tokens. I want to conceive of something called the human development token at some point. Uh, also, my origins are from Asia. My life journeys have taken me elsewhere, but uh, it's so exciting to be back here. I don't think you can find the vibe that you find in Asia and any other part of the world. 
So with that, again, thank you so much. And thank you so much for your support for the Pacific Island FinTech Innovation Challenge. I know the UNCDF team back there has worked really hard along with partners at the Market Development Facility uh, and the Asian Development Bank. And um, you see them all in their very Pacific Island sheds here. So thank you, and thank you so much for being here today. I would now like to uh, thank uh, especially the governments of Australia, New Zealand for your continued support. We are such big partners to the UN system here in the Asia Pacific in particular. I do know your colleagues in uh, the missions in New York and I will take back uh, my regards to them. Uh, thank you Commissioner, uh, to convey our regards to Canberra uh, and uh, also to New Zealand. I would very much like to acknowledge I have the duty to close to let me acknowledge again the Honourable Vivian Balakrishnan. Thank you so much for your hospitality, so delighted to be here. Your Excellency Henry Kuna, your both your remarks were so insightful, stimulating, inspirational. And of course, uh, High Commissioner uh, to Singapore, uh, New Zealand High Commissioner to Singapore, Joe Tindo, uh, Excellency. Ambassador Mary C. Cheng, the Singapore High Commissioner to the Pacific Island Forums, and the Governors of the Reserve Bank of Fiji, uh, Mr. Ari Fali, and the Governor of the Central Bank of Southern Islands, uh, Dr. Luke Foro. I remember being with the Southern Islands a few months ago uh, when we launched something called the Inclusive Digital Economy Scorecard. So today uh, we are really pursuing again uh, our renewed effort to connect the Pacific Islands financially in an inclusive manner, really towards uh, the pursuit of economic prosperity, resilience. And I really believe this is very core at the mission of UNCDF. If I uh, use one moment to tell you about the UN Capital Development Fund, this was set up by the member states of the UN back in 66, a fund. And now we have about six financial instruments that we are able to deploy. We do grants, technical assistance, loans from our balance sheet, uh, guarantees, a lot of risk mitigation, uh, bonds, and um, blended funds. We are running three blended funds, including one on a global fund for coral reef. So a lot of effort already going on, and we wanted to bring to you also, of course, our digital work. It's one of our flagship area, digital, inclusive digital economies. Local infrastructure is another area to which we have added the focus on climate, energy, biodiversity, gender and food systems. These are all very important for the countries that we serve. So here, uh, since 2008, UNCDF has helped perhaps more than 2 million low-income Pacific Islanders to gain access to formal financial services and financial education. We have been proud to support innovative financial uh, systems such as biometric banking system in Papua New Guinea that helped many women, thousands of women, who perhaps were illiterate to access bank accounts using fingerprint readers. We have supported the development and implementation of policy, regulatory initiatives, such as the national financial inclusion strategies in several Pacific countries. More recently, this includes the Pacific Regional E-Commerce Strategy and Roadmap. Perhaps most importantly, we supported consumer empowerment initiatives, such as the Financial Education Project, that involved embedding financial education, FINET, within the primary and secondary curricula in Fiji. This project helped equip Fiji's future generations with the knowledge about how to save, budget, invest, and grow their earnings. These are some, just some of the initiatives that we have championed over the last decade or so, and our footprint will only grow in the coming years. Be assured you'll see more of you in CDF in the coming years, especially with building digital economies with you. We have also seen since 2008 an uptake in the digital financial solutions in the Pacific. This includes increased usage and uptake of e-commerce and digital payments, such as mobile money and cards. While this might be a welcome development, we still have the issue of exclusion from the financial system. And this is uh, perhaps uh, still the growing digital divide that we need to overcome. So digital developments that are inclusive and, as we say in the UN, leave no one behind will be very, very critical. Let me close by saying I would like to leave the fintechs participating in this innovation challenge. This message, when designing your challenges, your response to the challenges, 
please make sure that you know you might be addressing the last mile, literally people living at the last mile of the market who are often still deprived of basic financial services. By joining this challenge, we count on your support and your experience in this area. I wish you all the best with the challenge and urge you not to hesitate to get in touch with any of my colleagues here and look forward to the winners of this competition as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Priti Singha. We appreciate um, flying all the way from New York to be present with us uh, at this auspicious occasion. And uh, you have uh, um, acknowledged, and thank you for acknowledging all the initiatives that have been uh, done in the Pacific, including the e-commerce, um, the mobile money, and uh, NFIS. So, I've uh, been at the Invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the speeches. So, once again, Please join me in giving our speakers a big round of applause. We would now like to hear from um, um, Ajay Chakna, which is our regional, techno, um, regional technical specialist, to come and set the scene for this um, uh, FinTech Challenge uh, 2022, and to also provide a context on um, on what's the objectives and also to introduce the implementing partners as well as the FinTech partners. Okay, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Malayta. Uh, you forgot my name and my and my profile, but that's that's absolutely fine. Just give me one minute while I set this up for you. Uh, I know I'm standing between you and T, so I'll keep it very brief and I'll just run you through uh, our journey and how we how we ended up here and what's the what's the thought behind uh, this whole fintech challenge. Okay, so I want to give you a bit of uh, uh, background. I know I know our executive secretary Preeti did speak about UNCDF. UNCDF is sort of in, uh, you know we have various programs in different parts of the world. But in the Pacific, we, we implement multiple programs from digital economy to climate insurance to investing in coral reefs, blue bond and blue economy. So we pretty much have a large portfolio back in the Pacific. Uh, I want to start by, by thanking our sponsoring partners, ADB and uh, MDF, uh, you know, for getting their dollar on us. Um, and we have uh, Visa as a knowledge partner. Well, they didn't bet their dollar on us, but you know, this uh, you know, they're, they're coming in as a knowledge partner. Um, implementing partners, some of the most uh, crucial crucial stakeholders in, in, in this whole challenge. Uh, and I want to take a moment to acknowledge TDP, Tonga Development Bank, uh, NDS, National Bank of Samoa, HFC in Fiji, FTB, sorry, FTB in Fiji, oops, sorry, sorry, go back. FTB in Fiji and, and Vodafone in Fiji and the Solomon Islands Provident Fund uh, in the Solomon Islands. So, so really the thought process was that once we go and procure or source fintechs, we needed those solutions or products to be sort of deployed into implementing partners. So these are partners that we work with uh, on, on a routine basis in all of the countries. So it's really great to be working with them on this, uh, uh, in this initiative. The supporting partners, obviously, Australian Government, Australian uh, Trade and Investment Commission, and, and, and equally so, the New Zealand Trade Enterprise, David Devar and team back in, uh, in Fiji, have been absolutely supportive. 
both New Zealand and Australia helped us sort of you know do outreach for the event. So so I guess there's some Australian fintechs in this room. So that's a clear testimony to how far and wide and deep uh, this this uh, you know this, this communications has reached. Of course, the Pacific Island uh, Forum SG. It's been great to be associated and have you as a partner. The Singapore Fintech Association, Sofnendo and team, uh, MAS, and our local implementing partner, Capron Asia, the Zenon and team. All of this wouldn't have been possible without the generous support of uh, the government of Australia and the government of New Zealand. So thank you, Commissioner uh, Will and Commissioner Joe, for your support. Okay, so this is the period of history and, and our journey to the boot camp and, and how did we end up here, like I said. Um, we launched what is known as an RFA. So now once you join the UN, you know, the first thing you, you learn is acronyms, right? So RFA stands for Request for Application. We, we started a procurement process. Um, we defined problem statements on the ground, right? So how we went about it is we sat with our implementing partners and tried to understand to them what is your problem, how can we support, right? So we we defined problem statements for these four countries and these seven implementing partners, and then we launched a, a request for application calling for fintech solutions and, and uh, solution providers to respond to that application. We opened this uh, application on the 20th of May, kept it open for 45 days, and and the result of that was we received. We received 51 applications and, and we, we brought it down to 30 eligible and then uh, we, we sort of further narrowed it down to 11. Uh, all of them are sitting in this room now. So these 11 are the, are the, you know, the, the best proposals and, and their solutions spoke most appropriately and directly to the problem statements. So I call them the Ocean's 11. <laughs> right? So, um, yeah, there you go. It's a, bit, it's a bit tacky, but then, you know, it's, we come from the region, you know, we, 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 recognize, we recognize the importance of fintech in the region and, and, and its relevance. So here are, the, here are the, the 11 companies, and it's a good mix of companies from different regions. We have four from Australia, uh, two from Fiji, two, two, two uh, local fintechs. Uh, we have one from um, Philippines, one from Malaysia, one from Singapore, and one from India, and one from Sri Lanka. So, I will not take you through the names, but these are our heroes. Give a big round of applause for them. <laughs> okay, so all of this took some work, right? So this was practically our team every day, right? So keeping ourselves motivated, you know, trying to move things along. And, and trust me, uh, you know, this took some logistics, you know, I think our colleagues who worked very hard, I think they ticketed 65 people to travel, we've, um, we've done hotel bookings, we've done, you know, daily uh, DSAs which we've transferred, plenty of, plenty of minor details that we have to go through, that's all besides, besides the, you know, the core or the meat of the, of the challenge in itself where we could define problem statements and sort of work with fintechs. So, all of this I say because uh, it's it's not easy working in the UN system. So, <laughs> so this is how we navigate every day when we start working. And and this this over here is my colleague Shobna who, who guides me and my team. And then Bram Peters, who's the regional manager, sort of pops up from somewhere and supports us and gives us some input. So, it's been, it's been quite a challenging uh, journey, but super exciting, and we're we're really glad that we've we're we're all here, and and it's it's really a testimony to to the team at CDF for putting this together. So, how we got everyone on the plane? Okay, this slide is not not very accurate. So we, you know, we, like I said, we ticketed about 50, 60, 65 people, and then uh, there's SG Puna and there's Lita and there's me, but. But I think it should be the other way around, you know, SG, SG and uh, Lita flew business and I flew, I flew economy, so I should be somewhere over here. But, uh, but nevertheless, you, 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 you get the picture. Uh, logistically, we moved so many people from different parts of the world, so it's very exciting. It's, it's quite complex as an operation. Um, so, and there we are today, here we are in this uh, lovely room. So I should take a moment to acknowledge Prudential for this, for this uh, for this uh, location and place, and thanks uh, Sopendu for recommending this to us as well. 
Okay, so the problem statement, I'm just going to quickly take you through, it's not more than three minutes. So the first problem statement which we defined for uh, Tonga Development Bank and National Bank of Samoa was largely around improving access to financial products and services. So we have Global SciTech from Malaysia, BPC from Australia, Genius Go, and Infinity Plus One uh, from our very own Fiji's. The second problem statement is around, around digitizing customer service. FDB is in the room, Southern, uh, Southern team. It, so they process quite a few loan applications in their organizations, about 15,000, you know, up, up to 15,000. So they were looking at what, you know, how can we help, you know, sit with them and work to sort of digitize customer service. So two, two uh, finalists, IT Galaxy, again one from Fiji and one from DirectPay from Sri Lanka. The third problem statement was on increasing usage of financial products and services, Solomon Islands Provident Fund, and finalists were YAPX and BPC again. So you'll see a bit of this Australia splattered all over the problem statements, and there you go, so it's all, all Australia. So streamlining foreign exchange was our fourth problem statement, and we're working with Vodafone. Um, our speakers spoke about M-Pesa, ministers spoke about M-Pesa, so the team who, who's fully responsible for it and their colleagues, but the team is here. So it's excellent working with Waterfall on this initiative. So uh, for, for the finalists, it's BPC and M Hits again from Australia. Last but not the least, uh, the final problem statement on enabling e-commerce, as SG mentioned, uh, and in-person post payment services. So we have uh, Card Access and WinK from Australia and Brankas from, uh, from Singapore. Here's what we have in store for the next three days, including today. Our agenda, we're pretty much, you know, at 10.30 and we're running ahead of schedule, so that's, that's, that's good news in a way. We break, we break now for about half an hour and then our colleagues at MBF and then Prudential uh, will speak to you and then we move into sort of, uh, you know, getting some downtime between the implementing partners and uh, the fintechs. Knowledge sharing session, there's going to be a focus group discussion then of course uh, the High Commissioner has been uh, very generous with inviting us all uh, to his residence for some drinks. It says TBC, Commissioner, I know you've confirmed, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so, day two is, uh, is fairly light. We have uh, Shiryu from ADP who will speak to us on, on what ADP does best. Um, and then we, do some, we have a session on elevator pitches. Someone's going to come and speak to us on, on how do we pitch. Uh, and then there's a knowledge partner talk, Visa steps in. Uh, and then one-on-one -on -one discussion between implementing partners and fintechs again. Last day uh, is uh, is the day, and and that's when we we want to see some fireworks, and we want to see some passion, and you know we want to see some um, you know kindled, inspired pitches, and I'm, I'm looking forward to all of you for that. Uh, so the way we've designed it is that all of all all the fintechs will have ten minutes to pitch. And ten minutes for Q and A, and we're going to break you, you know, break you, yeah. you know, break out into, into different rooms. So, uh, uh, and some some fintechs, some fintechs are have qualified for multiple problem statements. So we're going to shuffle you from one room to the next so that you can pitch. And then we have a stellar panel of judges. We have we have the regulators who have the final say in everything, and then we have industry experts, the implementing partners, CDS staff, ADB, everyone who can decide and who has the money sitting in this room. So, so really, really good luck on that. So we close at 12 o'clock uh, officially, but for the winners, we've set up, you know, we've kept aside the second half so that, you know, you, the implementing partner and the winner can continue speaking and engage uh, more deeply so that, you know, once you go back, you know where to pick up from. I mean, that's about it. Uh, it's time for tea. Uh, so my last slide is obviously, you know, good luck for everyone. And we really look forward to, to these three days and, and we're very, very excited. So thank you very much, everyone. Okay, so, so before you all break out, there is one small announcement to make because we're running ahead of schedule. We, a uh, little birdie told us that uh, a very special person has a very special day, and you know it's somewhere close by. Yeah. So, um, so we decided to 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 give a small kick for the Secretary General, Mr. Henry Pona. It's his birthday tomorrow, and we're gonna and we're gonna all sing to you, right? And and you should come up on stage now, as you. I.
and, and the minister was very kind and he, he cut a cake for you yesterday, so... He did more than he, he said. He said? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, may I request all of you to please sing for our beloved SG. It's his birthday tomorrow. He's uh, flying back tomorrow. Um, but thank you so much for, for, for coming today. And uh, we wish you the best in, in terms of your health and, and everything else. Peace. So, okay, so on my cue, three, two, one. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear SG. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Okay, excellent. So there's uh, there's some tea for all of you. Thank you very much for your patience and uh, please enjoy some tea. Thank you.